Hello and welcome to Getting Your Money's Worth, the show that focuses on value for your money. I'm Judith West, host, and our guest this afternoon is Congressman Herman Badillo. Congressman Badillo will be followed by our second guest, Michael Myers, and we're going to discuss today the state of education in New York City. Congressman, hello and welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. You've written a book, One Nation, One Standard. It's a very provocative title, Congressman Badillo. And in your book, you take Hispanic parents to task for not assuming more responsibility for the achievement of their kids in the public school system. You know, I have to ask you, we spend in this country something like $600 billion a year annually. Are you saying that the schools are not responsible? What I'm saying is that the Hispanic kids are not learning in the school system because they have a dropout rate of nearly 50% and sometimes more nationwide right. from graduation from high school. If you don't even graduate from high school in our society, there's nothing, there's no life for you because you'll never be able to participate. And therefore, I'm calling upon the Hispanic parents to get involved with the school system and upon the whole country to get involved with making sure that the Hispanic children learn because today the Hispanic population in the United States makes up 15% of our total population. 15%? 40, one five. 42 million people and in the next 50 years it's expected it'll be up to 25% of the population. Now, if the, and we'll be the largest ethnic group in the country. So if a group that makes up between 15 and 25% of the population is not learning, that is a national crisis. And therefore, I'm writing the book to let everyone know that we cannot tolerate this condition where the kids, especially the Hispanic kids, are not learning. Now, it's not... But let me ask you something. You know, it's almost a little bit of the chicken and the egg. You're saying that parents should take more, ought to take more responsibility. And frankly, we really probably shouldn't even limit that to Hispanic parents. We're, we can talk about parents in general, but specifically that. But on the other hand, where does the school's responsibility come in? You were education under Mayor Koch. So certainly no one has a better knowledge of it than you. No, the problem is that the school system is not functioning. It's not functioning. It's not functioning. We can't count on it to be repaired. I remedied many of the problems in the school system. For example, uh, I remedied the problem at the city university right. where they were graduating kids who couldn't pass a written test in English. Right. They had a program known as Open Admissions, which was approved in 1969. I was able to eliminate it in 1999. It took me 30 years and it almost to change killed, it. And, it, and it almost killed destroyed the, destroyed university. The, the reputation of uh, CUNY. Exactly. Now right. the reputation of CUNY is going back up. In the meantime, in the elementary and secondary schools, there are programs like social promotion, which means that if you do your work, you pass. If you don't do your work, you, you pass. You still pass. Everybody passes. And that is not education. Right. And what happens is, this is nationwide, the kids keep getting along past from grade to grade without learning. When they get to the ninth or tenth grade, they drop out of high school. Now, right, so we I wanna, cannot let's go count, back. we can't count on the educators to fix the system. So I'm calling upon the parents to get involved to make sure the kids learn. Because even with the dysfunctional system, whites learn and Asians learn. Right. So it's the primarily the Hispanics and blacks that are not learning. Right. So I'm calling upon the Hispanic parents to follow the example and of, step the, up to the plate. of the Asians right. and, and, and make sure the okay. kids learn. Well, you know, I have to say, I did my student teaching at Hunter College High School, and at the time, my mentor had somewhat of the same philosophy as your, or, which is to say, always said to us, the best desk is the kitchen table. That's where the learning, that's where the learning starts. But let's walk through this. You bring up social promotion. Uh, all right, so what are you suggesting a parent do? Go up and bang on the desk of the principal of the school and say, I don't want my kid promoted? 
No, I want to. I want to make sure my kid is learning, which the parent can do. How by does asking, the parent do that? You go to the kitchen table and say to the kid, "Write me an essay, and your life story, and see if the kid can read and write." Okay. And if he, the parent does that, they'll see the kid is not learning. Ask the individual, "What homework did you get today?" The kid says, "I didn't get any homework." Then you know something Something's is wrong. wrong. Go to the school, and and see what is going on in the classroom. Tell the uh, kid, listen, you are going to go to college because today, if you don't go to college, you're not going to be able to participate in our society. Mm -hmm. In the white community, when a kid is born, the parents open up a bank account for the kid to go to college. Right. That doesn't happen in the Hispanic community. And you have to give a priority to education, which is what the Asians do. The Asians, for example, have the same problems as Hispanics. They come here with as language. immigrants, as immigrants, and language who are poor, problem. who have language problems, who are discriminated against. Yet, the Asians make up only 4% of the U.S. population, and they have 20% of the students in the Ivy League Ivy schools right. like Harvard, Yale, Columbia, and Stanford. Right. So if the Asians can do it, Hispanics can do it, and the reason the Asians can do it is because the Asian families give the highest priority they, for education. They have a sense of priority exactly. for education. So are you saying that in the Latino background that this uh, lack of priority for education is something that uh, doesn't, exist. doesn't exist? Doesn't exist. It goes back to what I call the 500-year siesta. It goes back to our mother country, Spain, which was never interested in the education of the masses. Right. And then when the colonies became independent, the people who took over were basically dictators who were not interested in education. So the immigrants who are coming here from Central and Latin America do not have any ed education. They don't have any tradition of education. That's why we have to make and the this, effort now. And this kind of caste system almost still exists in, yes. many, in, many, la yes, in, many, in many Latino countries. Oh, yes. The, 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 what is going on is many of the Latino leaders make it a business to export the poor to the right. United States. Right. For example, the president of Mexico in 2003, Vicente Fox went on television, told the Mexican people, look, there are 100 million Mexicans, 50 million living below the level of poverty. I don't think I can do anything in the time I have left in office to improve it, which was a very elegant way of telling Same. the people, go, some, go to go, the United go States, someplace else. which they did. Which they did, and which we're worrying about today. Exactly. And which we're worrying about today. But I don't want I want I don't want to leave this conversation without bringing up something that was near and dear to your heart at one time. We mentioned the language problem. You were in the forefront. I think you gave birth to the idea of bilingual education. That's right. It was your baby. I was and the chief now, author. And now, Congressman, you took that baby and you want to and you're saying to yourself, let's throw it out with the bag. No, it's not the same baby. The baby that I uh, authorized in 1974 was bilingual education, the purpose of which was to make sure that the kids learned to speak English. But while they were learning to speak English, they would get the content, course content, in Spanish for a period of 18 months. To keep them, to keep, been, to keep them over the hurdle. Exactly. In the meantime, that has been distorted. And now we have bilingual education nationwide going on for four years, six years, and eight years. And what happens is the kids go off on a tangent. They don't learn either English or Spanish and it, instead of being moved right. into and the And it mainstream. perpetuates their exactly. lack of achievement. So that's not what I intended. Right. It's not what Congress intended, so I don't support bilingual right. education as it, it exists it was a, It was a good idea that got implemented poorly. Exactly. Uh, folks, we've been talking to Congressman Medeo about his book, One Nation, One Standard. And what we're saying here is that don't leave it to the schools. It's your kid, your taxpayer dollar. Take the aggressive stance to make sure that the world is open for your kid. Thank you.